Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about normals. Normal vectors are vectors that point away from the surface of an object. In shader graph, these vectors are passed in, and a lot of times you're going to be messing with the shape of your object and you need to fix those normals because the ones that are passed in are no longer valid. Today I'm going to show you how you can fix those inside shader graph. I'm game dev Bill. Let's get started. So first off, what are normal vectors? Well, they're a line that is perpendicular to the surface. On every point in a 3D model, there's a calculated normal vector that represents the line coming off of the surface. These nerf darts are the normal vectors of my head right now. So what are these for? Well, most of the time they're used for lighting. If my head was shiny and there was a light over here, a graphic system that was rendering my head would need to know that this point is facing this direction so that as the light shines on it, it would know it's being hit whereas it also needs to know that this point is facing away from the light and should be in shadow. So what causes these normal vectors to get messed up or moved into the wrong position? Well, let's take this hat. Keep the general shape the same, everything's fine. But if I change the shape of it, these two normals that were pointing outwards here now might be pointing inwards because the shape is different. Now in shader graph, the normal vectors are calculated on the model in advanced and passed in, which means this vector if I move the shape in a shader graph, it's still gonna point outwards. This vector is still gonna point where it was originally, which is wrong. And that's what we need to recalculate. We need to figure out that this surface has changed and that the normal vector should actually be pointing inwards like this, not outwards like it was originally. Today, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail of the actual graph needed to pull this off. The reason being, on my website, I've got a written version that really goes into the math, but it's very mathy, and it doesn't really fit well with the video. So I'm going to walk through it at a high level, but if you want details of the math, you can go to my website. And if you want to just skip to it being functional, I've got subgraphs that implement this algorithm up on my GitHub. I'll link to the GitHub and the written tutorial in the description below. To best explain the algorithm, I'm going to walk through it in a 2D example. So I've got here a circle that has two points, and off of each of those points, there's a normal vector. And I've also got some function that's gonna change the shape of that. So if I just ran that function, you can see I would turn this circle into a cloud shape, but the normals are pointing the same way they were before, which is now wrong. So we need to fix those. Going back to my original circle, what I'm gonna do, conceptually what this algorithm does, is it pretends that the surface is flat at that point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my point, and my normal coming off of it, and I use that to calculate a neighbor. Here I'm showing that neighbor as a red point. So I've got my main point, my normal vector, and then a perpendicular vector, a vector that's perpendicular to my normal, and that defines the point. Now, as you can see, the red points aren't actually on my circle surface, but if I were to make that red vector small enough, then they essentially are. They come very close to being on the surface. And this is what I'll use. I'll use this trick of making very, very near neighbors to make it be really close to them being on surface. Next, I can run my original point and these fictitious almost neighbors through the same algorithm that turns this circle into a cloud shape. And you can see now I've got new positions, but I've also got new fake positions. The red dots have moved position as well. And the vector between each blue and red dot has changed. Now bringing the original normals back into this drawing, you can see how wrong they actually are. But because I have that red line, I can recalculate the normal using that. And that's how I fix the normals. Now in 3D, I'm going to be doing something very similar conceptually, but I'm gonna be using the right hand rule a lot. So for example, I'll have the normal and the point, and I can calculate two neighbors. And then once I have two neighbors and I move things around, I can use those neighbors to recalculate my normal. Jumping into Unity, I've got a cube here and I've used ProBuilder to tessellate it heavily to give it lots of vertices. And I'm doing that so that in my shader graph, I can take each vertex and move it, slide it, so that it is going from wherever it was to being a unit of one away from the center. That way every point on this cube surface becomes equidistant to the center. That turns a cube into a sphere. I'm going to start by making a PBR shader graph that's lit and then creating a material off of that. I drag that material onto my cube and then jump into the shader graph. I'm gonna give it a color, purplish, just to be interesting. And then I'm gonna start adding some nodes here. All I'm gonna do in this is 
mess with the vertices to again balloon them out. So I'm going to start with a position node. That's the node that tells me where the vertex is currently and I'm going to set it to object space because again I want it to be equal distance from the center of the object regardless of where the object is. Feed that into a preview node just because that helps me organize it and also I'm going to be making this into a subgraph in just a little bit. And I feed that into a lerp because I'm going to be using time to lerp between the original position and my changed position. So original position set up in the A input of the lerp. Now I'm going to set up this changed one. So I take my position. I'm going to subtract 0.5 from two of the fields and add 0.5 to another one. This is because the way the cube is set up, 0, 0 isn't in the middle, and so I need to fix that. That's just a function of the model. Then I'm going to normalize that. That, again, like I said, makes every vertex be a unit length of 1 away from the center. And then I undo the add that I did earlier getting this back to be in the coordinate space it was before. I feed that into the B input of my lerp. Next, I create a preview node to feed into the T input of my lerp, and I'm going to have time feed into that. For now, I'll just create a time node and feed the sign output of that, because I don't really care about how fast this is or mess messing with any of the details of it. Sign is just fine. Going over to the scene view, you can see that my shape is changing, but the lighting is completely wrong. The side that's black and shaded when it's a cube looks right when it's in its cube shape. But when it balloons out to being a sphere, it looks really weird. It looks almost like it's painted dark in these weird boxy shapes. I also have it kind of sucking in inside of a cube. That was an accident. I meant to feed a 0 to 1 range into my lerp, but because sine is negative 1 to 1, uh, the lerp's going negative and we get some weird behavior. But I'm okay with that. As Bob Ross says, it's a happy accident. I think it actually works well to help highlight the need for fixed normals. Now, if you remember from the 2D example, I had my main point and I calculated a fictitious pretend neighbor, and then I moved both of them in the same way. And the easiest way to do something like that is to have a subgraph that does the moving. So I'm going to go back to shader graph here, highlight the nodes that do the actual transformation, and say convert to subgraph. I can give it a fairly unoriginal name, and then you'll see here it shows up in the graph. So jumping into that shade graph, I can come in here, I can rename the inputs to be something that I actually want, but otherwise I'm going to leave this subgraph alone. Going back to the main shader graph, now I'm going to start fixing the normals. There are two subgraphs that I've already made, I've put up on GitHub, links in the description, and I'm going to be using those here today. The first one is called Neighbors. I feed the position into it, and then I keep the input called Neighbor Dist as its default, because that's just set to some small value and it's fine as it is. Depending on your surface and what's going on in your shader graph, you may need to tweak that number, but for now I'll leave it as the default. So let's open up this neighbors sh subgraph and walk through the logic. Again, I'm not going to create it live here. All the math has gone into in-depth on my website, but this is just going to describe it at a high level. So first off, I've got my point and it's normal, and I can use that to calculate a mathematical function that represents the plane that this point is on. The formula is shown here and the d is what we're missing. So first off I calculate the d and I feed it into some logic that I'm naming here position 1 when normal.x is non-zero. Now I have this block because the math involved here is dividing by normal.x and if normal.x is 0 and you divide by 0 things blow up. So I have to tweak it a little bit to protect it from being 0 and feed it into this logic and this logic is right unless that value is zero. So then elsewhere in the graph, we can see that I have a block called position one when normal x is zero. And essentially what I'm doing here is this is all a whole lot of complicated math to say, I've got my point and my normal vector, and I'm figuring out one position, calling it position one, that is on this plane and is perpendicular to my normal. It's on the plane. It can be anywhere on the plane. I don't really care where. And once I figure that out, I can use my cross product to find a second one. This has given me two points that are on the plane, this fictitious flat plane that uh, I imagine comes off of my point, my point that I care about. Now these two new points could be any distance from my source. So what I have to do is I have to take the vectors that point towards them, normalize them, multiply them by this input that I've called neighbor disk to say, let's get them really, really close. Then I can take these new points that are normalized and really, really close to the original point and feed them out as outputs. These are my two fictitious neighbors. Again, when I did the 2D example, I only had one fictitious neighbor, but we're in 3D now, so I need two neighbors that as I move them around somehow and then run them through the right-hand rule again, I'll get my new normal. 
Believe it or not, that was 90% of the algorithm. That neighbor calculation, finding those fictitious close by neighbors is the meat of this algorithm. From here, it's actually pretty straightforward. So I go back to my main graph and I've got my neighbors. I'm just gonna take my two fictitious neighbors and run them through the same subgraph that I ran my main position through. At this point now, I've run my real position, the real point through this movement, and I've run my two fictitious neighbors through it. And so that means I have a point and two fictitious neighbors. And I can use, again, the right-hand rule to calculate these as vectors, do the cross product, and now I've got my new normal. This little bit of logic is also in a subgraph. I've named this one new normal. Again, both of these subgraphs, the neighbors that you use at the front end and the new normal that you use at the back are on GitHub. So I'm gonna add this here. I'll wire my real source position into it as well as my two fictitious neighbors. It always makes entertaining colors in the preview because it really has no bearing on reality here. And then I wire that into the normal input of my master node. So before we go and look at the scene view to see if this actually fixes our normals, I'm going to jump over to that subgraph real quick to just show you what it looks like. As you can see, there's not really much to it. I'm taking my two neighbor points and subtracting the real point that gives a vector between them. And then I normalize them so that they're the same length, feed that into the cross product. I normalize that again, which I actually probably don't need to, but I like safety first. And then I feed that as the output. And that's the new normal. Jumping over to the scene view, you can see that this is working as it balloons out into a sphere or sucks back into that kind of weird pokey thing that I made. Uh, you can see that the shine is correct, the shadows are correct, all the lighting works properly. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions, ask away in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. This is a really important video for me because it lays the foundation for some of my future things. There's a lot of times where I'm messing with vertices, messing with positions of things in Shader Graph, and I wanted to make sure to have this kind of foundational piece in. Again, remember to look in the description below for links to the written version, which covers all the math in much more detail if you care, as well as the GitHub, which just gives you the subgraphs if you want to use them. I appreciate all of you so much. Thanks for watching.